Hi, I'm Emily and I'm going to show you how to decorate this fun half and half cake, perfect for a joint birthday celebration or for someone who loves the mountains and the beach. This tutorial is a collaboration with Mark from Epic Confections. We decided to both make winter wonderland cakes, but I love summer too much, so I decided to make mine half winter and half summer. We'll check in with Mark a bit later and I'll be sharing his cake at the end of this tutorial. After building my cake, I'm giving it a crumb coat and I'm using the same frosting for the whole cake for this part, because it's all going to be covered up anyway in a few minutes. I'm chilling the crumb coat for about 30 minutes in the fridge, and now I'm using the side of my offset spatula to indent the cake to divide it in half, along the top and down the sides. I'm spreading more buttercream onto half of the top of the cake. This is my 4 minute buttercream and I've put the link for the tutorial in the description below and in the screen. I'm scraping off any buttercream that goes over the line down the middle of the cake. And it's easy to scrape it off because the crumb coat is cold so it holds its shape. Now I'm spreading buttercream onto half of the side of the cake, spreading up to the line I indented and going all the way down to the cake board at the bottom and up over the top of the cake so there aren't any air pockets. When it's all covered up, I'm smoothing it, not yet worrying about the edges being perfectly neat down the lines I indented. I'm smoothing the way I normally would, towards myself, then filling in any gaps in the frosting with some more buttercream using my offset spatula, and then smoothing again. And when I'm happy with how smooth it is, I'm using my frosting smoother to trim off the uneven edges of the frosting. Pushing the sharp edge of my frosting smoother into the frosting, and then pushing through until I think I've gone through all of the frosting up to the crumb coat, and then swiping the smoother off sideways to pull off the uneven edge of the frosting with it. This works well because the cake was chilled, so this last coat of frosting has started to set onto the cold cake, and my cut into the frosting is nice and neat. I'm doing the same thing on the other side, and then tidying up the top by swiping the overhanging frosting over the top of the cake, and scraping off any extra frosting that's got over onto this other half of the top of the cake. Okay, the wintry half of the frosting is finished. Now I'm mixing some buttercream colours, doing one bowl with royal blue and one bowl with teal, and these are Americolor gel food colours. I'm adding a bit of each into a third bowl and mixing them together to get a shade in the middle. If you're enjoying this tutorial, please click the thumbs up button. I'm spreading a few blobs of these different shades of buttercream onto the second half of the top of the cake, blending them together and smoothing it out, and then scraping these little smudges of blue off from the white half. And I can scrape it off without damaging the white frosting because the white frosting has chilled and set onto the cold cake. Now, before finishing the side of the cake, I'm going to add a border to the snowy side. I'm drawing the wavy design I want for the border on this acetate, or you could use parchment paper instead. I'm cutting it out and then wrapping it around the cake to cover up the frosting above where I want the border to go. I'm pinning the acetate into the cake to secure it tightly against the sides of the cake. It has to be really tight for this to work. The frosting on my cake has set, so it won't be damaged by pressing the acetate against it, but this means it's not sticky anymore, so I'm spreading on fresh frosting around the base, covering up all of the exposed area below the acetate, so it's all nice and sticky. It's important to spread either sideways or slightly downwards with each stroke, so that you don't push any frosting up underneath the acetate, because that will mess up your pattern. Now I'm pressing these tiny little white nonpareil sprinkles into the fresh frosting, all the way around this half of the cake, and then peeling off the acetate to expose the frosted cake with this pretty sprinkled border. I'm wiping off any extra sprinkles from the cake board so they don't stick to the other half of my cake. Now for the beachy side of my cake, I'm using a petal tip and this is a Wilton 125. 
and I'm holding it against the side of the cake with the narrow end pointing upwards. I'm holding it so that the top is just above the top of the cake, and holding it in one place, applying pressure to squeeze out the frosting as I spin the cake on the turntable to pipe a ruffle around this half of the cake. I'm keeping the same amount of pressure on the bag, and when I move my wrist slightly backwards over the part of the ruffle I've already piped, it makes a little wave. When I finish the first ruffle, I'm going back to the beginning and pushing the ruffle over away from the white side of the cake to make a cleaner divide. For the next ruffle, I'm holding the top of the tip about halfway down the previous ruffle, so the ruffles are overlapping by half, and this makes sure you don't see any of the crumb coat through the ruffles. If you're looking for more styles of buttercream frosting, I have a free online course on 10 frosting techniques, and you can sign up by clicking the link in the screen, or I've put the link in the description below this video. I'm continuing all the way down the cake, but after about a third of the way down, I'm switching to my next shade of blue, the one that's in between the blue and the teal. Again, I'm overlapping the previous ruffle by about half, to make sure I'm completely covering up the crumb coat. If you wanted to, you could do an ombre crumb coat, with three shades of blue frosting so that if any was visible through the ruffles, it wouldn't matter, but it's quicker to just do a white crumb coat and make sure you overlap the ruffles. This is what it looks like from the top, and you can wiggle the piping bag as much as you want to make the ruffles as wavy as you like. You can see this ruffle isn't completely horizontal, I'm slanting upwards, which is fine, I'll fix it next. I'm switching to my final colour, the teal buttercream, starting much higher up than normal on this side, so that I can cover up some of the difference on the left. I'm doing the same for the next few ruffles. For the last ruffle, I'm resting the base of the piping tip on the cake board to make sure I cover up the very bottom of the cake. And there they are! Pretty oceanic wavy ruffles. Let's check in with Mark from Epic Confections. He's also making a cake with a winter wonderland theme. So, Emily, how are you? I'm fantastic, thank you. How are you, Mark? I can't complain. Look at how beautiful your background is. So you're living in California. I am, yes. Uh, That's where it's not really winter at the moment. <laughs> I know, and, and over here we have four feet of snow and, you know, blizzard warnings. It's insane. That's amazing. So we are doing a winter themed cake. I actually ended up doing it so it's half winter wonderland and then on the back half it's kind of beachy so it's like California so it's wintry but it's it's, it's a winter ca totally California wintry, winter so exactly make sure you go to Mark's channel to check it out it's called epic confections make sure you hit the red subscribe button and you can watch how he made his cake over on that video as well take care bye, bye. Now I'm making some mountains by melting white candy melts, or you can use white chocolate with some white icing colour to make it really white, and spreading it onto parchment paper. And I'm sprinkling some more of these white nonpareil sprinkles along half of it. While it sets, I'm making some snowflakes by putting the white chocolate in a Ziploc bag, snipping the corner off, and piping some snowflakes onto parchment paper. You could draw these on first if you wanted to trace them. As soon as I've piped them on, before the chocolate sets, I'm sprinkling some sugar over the top to make the snowflakes glittery. This is just regular sugar. To make the mountains, I have a glass of hot water, and I'm dipping a sharp knife into it, and then cutting diagonals into the white chocolate to make little triangles for mountains. My snowflakes have set, so I'm lifting them up off the parchment paper with an offset spatula, and then pressing them gently against the white frosting. My cake has been sitting at room temperature while I decorate, maybe for 30 minutes, so the frosting has got a bit of condensation on it, and that's helping the snowflakes to stick and stay in place. Okay, the sides are finished, so now I'll do the top. I'm piping some swirls of frosting with a 1M tip and pressing my triangles of white chocolate into them to make a mountain range. For the beachy side, I'm using this 2D tip, which is a bit more curved and wavy than a 1M tip. 
I'm filling it with the leftover frosting in all the shades of blue and teal and piping semicircular ruffles around the blue half of the top of the cake, wiggling the bag from side to side to make these ruffles really wavy, doing one inside the other to cover the whole top of the cake in these ombre turquoise waves. Ta-da! I love this half and half design and I'll be sharing a few more half and half cakes soon with half and half flavours as well as decorations. Subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a tutorial. I share a new one every week. Now click the link in the description below to head over to Epic Confections to watch the video of how Mark made his cake. Subscribe to his channel for some very entertaining videos of very impressive cakes.